Welcome to Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, your day weather podcast brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism, reminding you that even as the temperatures fall and snow is on the horizon in Thermopolis, you can always find yourself in hot water. Well, a brief warm up is coming. We're going to have pretty decent weather today and tomorrow after a blustery, chilly day yesterday, a nice little rebound in temperatures and conditions. So if you need to get out, if you're hitting the road, traveling to airports today and tomorrow, we're still looking at a window of opportunity here where the weather looks good. However, we still have this Arctic surge colliding with this Pacific storm system. The models are in really good agreement. The overall basic pattern I think is set in stone now in terms of what's going to unfold with the timing. It's really just going to go down to the smaller details, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. So we definitely have travel concerns in the region Thursday through Saturday for the northern and central and parts of the southern Rockies and the adjacent high plains. And as we showed you yesterday, this cold air will spill over on into the other side, the west side of the Continental Divide as well. So I wouldn't call this a big storm in terms of huge amounts of snow, but it's going to be very impactful over a large area. The cold and snow will spread further south and east into the country during the course of the weekend. But in the western United States, travel weather does really improve a lot on Sunday. Sunday will be cold, but the snow will be done. So coming home Sunday, while there's still going to be some icy roads and highways and mountain passes to contend with, the weather for traveling Sunday will be much, much improved. Some great lenticular photos here coming out of Rapid City area. Thanks, Bob, for sending that on in. So the lenticular cloud situation, something we might see again today with the higher winds aloft and a little bit of a warm up. I'm going to show you two satellite images, show you what's going on across North America. This area of low pressure right here heading into the Great Lakes and Midwest and East is producing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity. This is mostly rain, but it is causing a lot of airport delays, a lot of just messy, wet fall weather here. It's more fall than winter. That's what came through our region yesterday. You can see a little bit of gray up here in north central Canada. That's the Arctic air that's building and poised to make its move south, but it just kind of stalled out there right now. Now let's go over to the Pacific, and you can see the swirl of clouds here in the Gulf of Alaska. Some moisture coming on in to the Pacific Northwest. This area of moisture is what's going to be in the collision as we get on into later this week. A lot of active weather in the North Pacific, but right now, at least initially, this is that little gap in the weather we've got coming today and tomorrow. But let's set the stage on, on what's coming. Already, the National Weather Service is putting out winter weather advisories and winter storm watches in anticipation for the travel concerns that are coming on up. So you can see across the northern tier of the U.S. where you see these blue areas, those are winter weather advisories and winter storm watches. And if we were to focus in on Wyoming, you can see that we've got already a large part of Wyoming under a winter storm watch for late Wednesday night through late Thursday. Now, if your county isn't in blue, that doesn't mean you're missing the storm. These advisories will probably extend it to the southern counties later on and up here. But right now, the confidence is highest right here in the Wednesday night, Thursday time frame. This part of the state is going to be more impacted as we get into Thursday night and Friday. So that's why there's no watches or advisories in those areas yet. But you can see those darker blue areas where we're going to see some problems. So setting the stage for today and tomorrow. High pressure noses on in, as we saw in the satellite imagery, so good weather for the west. And we can see that over the next 24 hours, all the wet weather here in the east. So if you're headed to an airport in this side of the country today or tonight, have fun sitting in airport lobbies and terminals, I'm afraid to say. But there's not a lot of winter weather with that. Elsewhere, though, pretty quiet weather. There is some snow up into New England and the northern Great Lakes throughout the next 24 hours as well. Now, as we get into noon Thursday, so this is by noon on Thanksgiving Day Thursday, as we showed you yesterday, that low here comes off the Pacific Northwest Coast. It sags south into the Great Basin and the Rockies while we have this surge of colder air that's coming in. And there we go. This is noon Thursday. This is by Friday morning. So we have a counterclockwise spin around this low, and it's going to push that colder air in out of Canada. Warmer, moist air coming in from that 
low off the west coast, and then we have the collision of air masses right here. And to kind of graphically show you what's going on, if we were to take a cross section, now this graphic isn't perfect, but it kind of highlights what's going on. I put this triangle here to represent the front range of the Rockies. So the cold air coming in out of Canada gets backed up against the Rockies and that warmer Pacific air coming over on top of it. This is what we call that overrunning situation to where the cold air is on the ground banked up against the divide. That warm, moist air comes over on top of it. And where the, the, the cold air is the deepest is where you're going to get the heaviest snowfall. So the terrain is really important and where you are situated with the terrain is really important. And you'll see that as we take a look at kind of what is really going to transpire. If you look at how the atmosphere is being represented, this is by noon Thursday. And what this shows by noon Thursday is the cold air is backed up right along the front range here to the Palmer Divide. You can see the orange west of the divide. So the cold air is this wedge right here that you're seeing with the temperature anomaly, the blue and the green, but you can see how much warmer it is west of the divide. So the warmer moist air from that low from the Pacific comes up over on top, but the air is the deepest, the coldest air is the deepest just on the other side of the mountains. And you're gonna see this in the graphics in terms of what the moisture is going to be like. So as we take a look at the precipitable water, this is for noon Thursday. The precipitable water, which just shows where the heaviest moisture is, you can see by noon Thursday, the deepest moisture is over northern and north central and northeastern areas of Wyoming. And that deeper moisture is going to coincide at the same time with that cold air right there coming on in. So there's that moisture coming in off the Pacific. And if we go and show over time, that cold air sinks, it is overrun by the Pacific moisture. And then you can see this show, looks very similar to what I showed you yesterday and in terms of timing. So by early Thursday morning, it's going to be snowing over far southern Montana, far northern Wyoming. And then that snow just sinks south slowly through the course of the day. But if you look real close, and we'll show you in, in a graphic here a little bit, there's parts of Wyoming in the region where the deeper cold air doesn't get there in time to really boost the snow production. And uh, you'll see that here in a minute with a more focusing graphic. And here's the temperature anomaly by noon on Friday. So the cold air is banked up against the divide. But you see this little island here of the higher terrain where that cold air just isn't getting into there yet. So what we end up having is the cold air coming around the higher Rockies and coming down into the plains. But it does spill over to areas west of the divide. So for the region, these are the snow totals again. Take these roughly, these are not going to be exact, but the pink area is showing where that axis of the heaviest snow is going to be, and it's probably going to be right there. I think north central, northern northwest, parts of northeastern Wyoming and central Wyoming. Look at the south end of the Wind River Mountains here. You're going to get really good snow there over South Pass and into the Lander area. And also look at this area right here. If you just get on the other side of the divide, South Central and Southwestern Wyoming will be sheltered a bit from the heavier snow. And if we focus in, you can see that. So this is the Laramie Range Mountains, the I-80 Summit area up into the Shirley Basin. So you can see the colder air, the deepest colder air is just along and on the other side of the mountains. So the snow production will be better. But look at this heavy snow band right here. Also look at this in the Northwest Kansas, Northeast Colorado, Southwest Nebraska area. We got to watch that as an area that could be a trouble area for travel as we get into the day Friday and into the early parts of Saturday. But even west of the divide, even where the snow production may not be as good, everybody is going to be getting into the action. And if you look at the whole country through Sunday, you can see lighter snows get further south along the IED corridor here across Iowa into the Great Lakes. And you can see all the way down into parts of northern Arizona and northern New Mexico. The snow is going to be pushing south into those areas as well. We'll have more details, fine-tuning things a little bit more for you tomorrow. Have a great Tuesday.